Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Mean Gene Show. We are streaming live here on podbean.com. It's a Wednesday, December 16th, 2020, a few days before the start of week 15 in the National Football League. Hope everyone is doing okay out there. Today, we are going to take a look at the current NFL standings and playoff picture as we head into week 15 of the NFL season. So speaking of week 15, this is also fantasy football playoffs, and I am so proud to say, folks, that Mean Gene is currently in the playoffs. I had a huge win last week, thanks to Aaron Rodgers and Stefan Diggs, so I believe I have round two this week, so we'll see how all of that turns out, but nevertheless, I'm excited, so I mean, it's, you know, fantasy football. I didn't even think I was going to play fantasy football this year because of the pandemic but then again i mean i've played for like the last 10 years in a row i mean so it's just it's just hard to stop you know but i didn't run any leagues this year normally we have the sports kings league that we do so this year we didn't do it but um so i just jumped into a league uh with a bunch of guys from minnesota of all places so anyway that's that but uh we're going to take a look at the current NFL standings. We're also going to take a look at the playoff pitchers in both the AFC and the NFC. And of course, there's some great matchups this week. Later on in the week, I will do my week 15 NFL picks. So that's going to happen. But today is all about the current NFL standings as we uh, get near the playoffs. I mean, it's going to be here before you know it. So why don't we just go ahead and start in the NFC, which is really interesting, folks. Things are just getting so interesting in that NFC West. I mean, you got the Rams right now and the Seahawks. Both have a record of nine and four. Uh, the Rams are on a two-game win streak there. They have won uh, four of the last five. And then you got the Seahawks, who, um, of course, they, they're back on a win streak now, but they have won – three of the last five and, and and they're nine and four. And then you got the Arizona Cardinals at seven and six, uh, followed by the San Francisco 49ers at five and eight. So I don't think the 49ers are going to make the playoffs. I mean, it just doesn't seem like that's going to happen. I mean, they have not been mathematically ruled out of the playoffs yet, but I just don't think they are going to make it uh, the way things stand currently. But I had said previously on an NFL standing show that I felt that three teams would make the playoffs from the NFC West. And I still feel that way, even though the Cardinals, um, you know, they've only won two of the last five, but they're right there, seven and six. And I believe they are still in the playoffs right now. Maybe the seventh seed, we'll take a look at that uh, here in a little bit, but Nevertheless, they are sort of trending downward, but I mean, there's still a couple of games left to go in the season. But man, the, the Rams, the Rams have just fought their way back to that spot. I mean, it's just been a seesaw between the Seahawks and the Rams. And, and it's just it's fun to see, actually. But I tell you what, do not count out the Rams. I mean, this team made the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, still have a great team. And it's just amazing how get rid of Todd Gurley and they have uh, running backs by committee, which, you know, Henderson uh, Brown and, and Cam Akers. Oh my goodness. So these rookie running backs are really having a fabulous year uh, uh, so far, but I mean, the Rams are playing great football. They are good on both sides of the ball. They're good on defense. They're good on offense and they have the ability to, run when they need to run, and then they can pass when they need to pass. So Jared Goff, uh, those guys are just doing a great job. Uh, Sean McVay, I mean, they are really, really doing well. So we're going to see how things turn out. I mean, I just think right now, you know, and, and the Seahawks have uh, a couple of good games remaining. I think they got a easy one coming up this week. We'll take a look at that as well. But, you know, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that you have those two teams tied at nine and four because that's just basically how the season has been in the NFC West. So I still think three teams have an opportunity to get into the playoffs. We 
Sure, see, let's take a look at the NFC South, uh, which is quite interesting as well. Uh, you have the New Orleans Saints at 10 and 3 right now, and they have won four of the last five. Taysom Hill has done pretty good in relief for Drew Brees. And you also have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 8 and 5. So, I mean, right now, I would say, unless just things, uh, unless things just get really you know, bad uh, for the Buccaneers. I think you're going to get two teams from the NFC South in the playoffs. Of course, you know, the Buccaneers, they've, you know, won two of the last three uh, uh, games played. So, um, I mean, two of the last five games played, I'm sorry. So they they still have a, a, a uphill battle because there are so many other competing teams in the NFC that are trying to get in. But Nevertheless, you're only going to get, you know, those two teams. I would find it hard to believe that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would not make the playoffs. I just really think they're 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 trending upward. Uh, Tom Brady is clicking there, Gronk and Chris Godwin, uh, Mike Evans. I mean, you just have a lot of weapons there, and they have a good running game too. So that's that's the 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 magic thing there is to have that running game. They don't use it as much as they uh, should be using it. But they have it. They have the option to to run the ball, and and when they do, they run it very well with with their running backs. So uh, we, we we're gonna take a look and see how things are gonna pan out from there. Uh, Atlanta Falcons. I mean, might as well talk about them. I mean, at this time of the year, the Atlanta Falcons are just spoilers. Okay, at this time of the year, they like to just kind of you know jack things up for teams that are trying to make the playoffs. So if you're one of those teams in that five, six, and seven spot there in the NFC. And if you're playing the Falcons, watch out because I mean they just they just tend to just, you know, make things interesting for, for other teams, even though they're not going anywhere with a four and nine record. They've lost two in a row. Uh same thing with the Carolina Panthers. They also had four and nine over in the NFC South. You know, it's just been a crazy year for Teddy Bridgewater and and the uh, Carolina Panthers not having Christian McCaffrey for the bulk of the season. Tried to get him back. He got hurt again. You know, they might get him back here for the next uh, three games or whatever. But I don't really know if it's worth it, you know. But uh, just a very disappointing year for the the Carolina Panthers there. And 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 then, then you know, having Tom Brady in that division just made things a lot difficult for Matt Ryan and Teddy Bridgewater. So I'm just really uh, shocked to see where the Saints, you know, are consistent. The Saints have been consistent for the last couple of years. The playoff picture in the NFC is really going to be exciting. And I can't wait to to jump into that here a little bit later. Let's look at the NFC East. Now, we're not really laughing at the NFC East uh, as much as we were before. We called it the NFC Lease. That's what a lot of people uh, referred to it as, but the Washington football team now is starting to get some attention, and rightfully so. I mean, they're on a four-game win streak. No one has had a win streak in the NFC East, but it's the Washington football team. It just seems like after that Thanksgiving game, even prior to that, I mean, this team has been trending. You know, we thought it was going to be the Philadelphia Eagles. We thought the New York Giants had an opportunity. And even the Dallas Cowboys, I mean, it looked as if they were not completely out of the playoff picture, but it's this Washington football team that pretty much eliminated them from any potential playoff run there. I mean, we only know uh, one team is going to make it from the NFC East. And that, I mean, it just looked like it's going to be the Washington football team. They are at six and seven. They're uh, three and two in the division. I mean, and they are looking good. Ron Rivera, and I've had the opportunity to meet him, a great guy. I mean, you got to know Ron Rivera and the defense of the Washington football team is something that should just really frighten uh, teams here as the playoff uh, playoffs get here. I mean, whoever faced the Washington football team certainly is going to have their work cut out for them dealing with Chase Young and, and that defense. That defense is playing good. If you know anything about Ron Rivera, you know – he is a defensive guy, so it's not surprising that the Washington football team is playing great football. So we shall see. The 
New York Giants, I mean, they have won four of the last five, too, but they just, uh, it's just, you know, with Daniel Jones being hurt, I mean, it, it, it's an up with battle there with uh, with the Giants. I mean, I just, you know, they, they, they are playing okay football. I mean, losing Saquon Barkley, who knows if, if Saquon Barkley would have played this year where, where the Giants would be. But I want to go back to Washington real quick and just look at that football team. I mean, you know, with Alex Smith, I mean, you don't know who's going to be quarterback there. And they're going to be quarterback by committee. The run game is pretty much obsolete now, especially with Gibson being hurt. But their defense is so good that it can keep them in games. And that's why you don't take your eyes off the, the Washington football team, especially they are going to probably be the division winner and might host a playoff game. And good luck. You know, uh, that defense is just incredible. But uh, the Eagles, we're talking about the Eagles here at four and eight and one. And we all knew it was going to happen sooner or later. The Philadelphia Eagles bench Carson Wentz and they put in Jalen Hurts. And I mean, we saw that coming uh, the moment they drafted Jalen Hurts. We knew the writing was on the wall. But the Eagles, man, I tell you, there's going to be some changes in that organization. Let's talk about Doug Peterson. And I mean, I understand that they made they won a Super Bowl a couple of years ago. But man, that just seems like ages and and. Eagle fans are very, very, very on top of their football, and it's all about what have you done for us lately. You know, their Super Bowl MVP gone, big mistake they made, gave Carson Wentz all of this money, and they're just not getting a return on their investment. And this has just got to be crazy. And anytime your owner decides to boycott a game because of your performance, that's got to be a problem. I mean, the owner of the Philadelphia Eagles decided uh, he was going to skip a game, and he never misses a game. Jeffrey Lurie, he never misses a game, and he was so pissed off at the team's performance that he didn't go. So you know, and they were in first place at that time, of course. They got that ugly tie, which made things a little bit interesting, and that tie helped them for the most part until the Washington football team started playing uh, good football there. but. It's just so, I mean, it's just been a roller coaster ride for Eagles fans. And now, you know, you have Jalen Hurts out there. And, you know, the thing about rookie quarterbacks is that, you know, there's not a lot of game film on those guys. So they have immediate success, you know, especially the style that Jalen Hurts play, not too different from what Kyler Murray, you know, does and what Lamar Jackson does. I mean, they have the option to run, pass. And, and do whatever. But uh, it's it's interesting, though, how things have developed there. I mean, you cannot get rid of Carson Wentz. This is just too much money. No one's going to take that salary. I mean, so the Eagles are sort of stuck with it. But what happens with the team, uh, with, the, with the coaching staff after this season, it is not unusual for a Super Bowl winning coach to be fired. I mean, just ask uh, Mike McCarthy with the Green Bay Packers. You know, I mean, I, I like to say that Doug Peterson will get another opportunity. But, man, this quarterback situation here and signing off on getting rid of Nick Foles. And I tell you, I, you know, I can see Doug Peterson, you know, being and, and that uh, let go. That entire coaching staff, I could see them being fired this year, especially if they – uh, continue to to trend downward. They have only won one of the last five games there uh, that they've played. And uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens there in Philadelphia over in the NFC East. And the Dallas Cowboys, I think, uh, big game last week against Cincinnati. I think what Cowboys fans and ownership probably saw was the future, what it could look like when a team is playing just great defense and Andy. Dalton went up and uh, to Cincinnati and just beat a, a broken down Bengals team. But nevertheless, it was a good win for the Dallas Cowboys. And I think they have made it uh, abundantly clear that Mike McCarthy is going to come back next year. So we will, you know, continue to, I mean, this team is four and nine last place in the NFC East, and they are still a popular team. People will always talk about the Dallas Cowboys, even though they haven't won the Super Bowl since uh, what, 95, I think. 
And I mean, they're the most richest organization in all the sports. So, you know, I mean, it's just that's just the way it is. The Cowboys are always going to be relevant, whether they're winning or not. But um, if you hate the Cowboys, then you certainly got to be uh, thrilled and having the time of your life right now looking at them in last place in the NFC East. Okay, let's take a look at the NFC North. And man, this is an interesting division. And yeah, we know Green Bay is pretty much going to run away with this. They have won four of the last five. They're currently on a three-game win streak at 10-3, and 5-1 and one at home. Four and one in the division, eight and two in the conference, which is incredible because that's that's where you want to be against the conference. You, you're gonna have to get to the Super Bowl by beating your conference, and they certainly uh, should be. They should be the number one seed. I have to go back and look at the Saints. Yeah, where they tied with the Saints. So the Saints are also ten and three, and the Packers are ten and three. And we'll take a look and see who's the number one seed there uh, here in a little bit when we look at the playoff picture. But the Green Bay Packers, certainly Aaron Rodgers is playing great. I mean, you know, I have started him for probably the last couple of weeks in my fantasy football league. I also have Ben Roethlisberger as my backup quarterback in, in my fantasy football league. But Aaron Rodgers is putting up crazy numbers. And, and you know, we're not, we don't talk about Aaron Rodgers as much. I think people have already, you know, just wrote him off as being an old guy that's been around and, and uh, his time is up, but man, <laughs> you know, we're talking about the same Green Bay Packers that fired Mike McCarthy. So it was clear that they were not on the same page and look at the success that, you know, Matt LaFleur is having with Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. I mean, look at what's happening there. So you got to respect that. So you got to know Aaron Rodgers has a lot of say. So he has a coach that believes in him, listens to him, and they both find a way to get the wins that they need. And it's incredible. You can't argue with it. Ten and three, having the, the, the time of his life there. I mean, and they also have that running game that sets them up for the pass. I mean, they could, Aaron Rodgers could get pass all day, but he doesn't have to. They have a complete running game. Uh, And the defense is still, you know, somewhat suspect there, but, you know, they put up enough points to where, you know, defense giving up some touchdowns don't really hurt them. And, and, and they're playing good. So now this is where things get interesting over in the NFC North, because you got the Minnesota Vikings at six and seven. You also have the Chicago bears at six and seven. Mitchell Trubisky is back at the quarterback position for the Bears and the Vikings all the Vikings are actually in second place in the NFC North. So the Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears are not going to quit. They are going to stick with this because they know where the Arizona Cardinals are right now. And, you know, the Cardinals are trending downward there. So that that final spot, that seventh spot there in the NFC could could go either to the Vikings or the Bears. So stay tuned. I mean, things are just not over in the NFC North as far as a team making a wild card there. So I I, I talk about their matchups here uh, in a little bit. Uh, and then that is it for the NFC. So now we'll go ahead and take a look at the playoff picture and just see how things are to sort of back up what I have already uh, told you. Um, The number one seed in the NFC right now belongs to the Packers. Okay. Uh, The Packers have already clinched the division. Uh, they've already clinched a playoff spot. So uh, they played the 4-9 Panthers this week. Uh, you know, it's just going to be interesting to see. No, I mean, no competition there. It, it'll be interesting to see how they either rest players or maybe just continue to stay on this hot streak that that they're on. The number two seed uh, is, is the Saints. The Saints have also clinched a playoff spot. But, oh, my goodness, do they have a game? this week against the Kansas City Chiefs. And, <laughs> I mean, this is going to be great because I think if you're an AFC fan there, 
you know, the, the Chiefs certainly don't want to lose, uh, you know, th- this game. And, and, and the Saints certainly don't want to lose it either. But this is going to be classic. And this could be a preview of the Super Bowl. I mean, let's just go ahead and call it what it is. I mean, because, I mean, these two teams could be in the Super Bowl, which I would think would, would be a hell of a Super Bowl to watch with the Saints and the Chiefs. I, I mean, it's a hell of a matchup. So you're going to hear a lot of that uh, as this game gets closer. And, of course, during that game, you, you, I mean, you're just going to hear you got 12-1 and one versus 10-3. and three. No doubt, probably one of the best matchups coming up for Week 15. Uh, so the Saints with the number two seed. The number three seed right now belongs to the Rams at nine and four, first place in the NFC West. They are going to play the 0-13 Jets this week. So no one wants to lose to the Jets. Jets, I, I, I mean, at this point, it looks like they're going to go 0-16, but it's the NFL. You don't know what's going to happen, okay? Uh, just ask the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, 11-0, and now 11 and two. I mean, the Jets could win. I, I as the Seattle Seahawks certainly will be uh, pulling for the Jets. I think they just played them last week. So uh, here the Jets, you know, played two uh, tough teams back to back. But the Rams are your three seed there, your four seed, and these are all your division leaders too that I just uh, talked about a minute ago. Uh, the four seed belongs to the Washington football team. Uh, they play the Seattle Seahawks very interesting there. So, I mean, this, this is really – so Washington really needs to win because they still have the Giants on their tail. Um, and and so the Seahawks certainly want to win too because they want to get into that uh, – they want to get to that three seed uh, uh, to replace the Rams. So, um, so that's your four seed. So now your wild card teams. Remember, you got one additional wild card team in each uh, conference this year. Normally, there are only two wild card teams per uh, conference. Now you got three. So that fifth seed right now belongs to the Seattle Seahawks, and right, rightfully so. Nine and four, second place in the NFC West. Uh, they play Washington this week. Your sixth seed belongs to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers play the Atlanta Falcons. Now, this is, uh, it gets interesting here. Like I said earlier, the Falcons like to play smaller for people, and this is a NFC South divisional uh, matchup here. So watch out. Watch out, Tampa Bay. Uh, they're eight and five, second place in the um, NFC South, and they play, you know, they play a team that just really don't care. And this is where things get dangerous when you play teams that don't care. So, we, you know, right now they're in that sixth spot. And, and like I said, you got teams that are really looking, you know, down or looking up at these guys and wanting to get in there and possibly uh, get a playoff spot. So the Buccaneers, so far, uh, you know, they, they will be your sixth seed and your seventh seed right now. And it seems like this team – you know, they started out being just one of the hottest teams in the NFC. I mean, no one expected the Arizona Cardinals to just be, you know, great this year. They have played really good football this year. They are seven and six, though. They, you know, sort of been sliding a little bit. And uh, they are a third place in the NFC West. But they play the Philadelphia Eagles, and that's a scary team as well. Four, eight, and one. You know, the Eagles are trying to just salvage what they can. They are mathematically still in the NFC playoffs uh, picture. They, you know, I mean, they, they, they're, um, they, they could get in there, but, I mean, it's, it's a long shot for them, but they are certainly uh, they have an opportunity. So teams that are really on that outside looking in, because before uh, the, the Eagles, I mean, the Eagles have a long road to actually get up there. Uh, to the playoffs, the teams that you really want to keep an eye on are the Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears. Both teams are six and seven, and they have a chance to get to the playoffs. They they have an outside chance to get in there. So we're going to see how that how that goes um, uh, with the with the NFC. So now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the AFC standings and. You know, this is really interesting here because 
things are there's a lot of competitive teams over in the AFC, and we're gonna start with the who we're gonna start with? How about we start with the hmm? Well, I'll tell you what, it'd be nice if we just kind of get to the right conference here. The NFC just don't want to go anywhere. Okay, here we go. Let's start with the AFC East. And, uh, you know, I have to give credit where credit is due. You know, Tom Brady leaves the AFC East. I mean, if this was last year, we would be talking about the New England Patriots. They are top of the the division and doing great things. but that's not the case. Things have changed. There's a new sheriff in town, so to speak, over in the NFC East, and that is going to be the Buffalo Bills. Okay, so you got the Buffalo Bills at 10 and 3. They are on a three-game win streak. They've won four of the last five. They just had a huge win Sunday night against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you have the Miami Dolphins 8-5, and five, the surprising Miami Dolphins. Now, we know for damn sure that the Dolphins and the Bills wouldn't be where they are. They got to be thinking. Uh, I, I think they probably even helped Tom Brady move to Tampa. I wouldn't be surprised. But, uh, you know, we knew someone had to step up in the AFC East, and I'm not surprised that the Buffalo Bills is is, is doing what they're doing. They have a, a, a complete passing game. They also have a complete run game and that's basically what you're going to need defense is a little suspect but they get it done seven and two in the conference undefeated in the division so they are really doing you know what 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 they need to do um and and you need to give them all the credit that they they deserve now the dolphins is probably going to be your surprise team there no one saw that coming you get a brand new coach you get a um you know, you get a, a quarterback situation there. You know, they drafted Tua, even though Fitzpatrick was playing great football. And at some point in time during the season, they had to make the decision, okay, let's get the rookie in there. And this seems to be, you know, the year for quarterbacks, getting an opportunity. So not surprising there that Tua is doing uh, great things with Miami and Brian Flores is doing great things. Uh, the GM, that whole organization has just really changed and turned around for the better. And right now they are in the playoffs. I I will be talking about that playoff picture here in a little bit in the AFC. The New England Patriots, though, that's the one team that, I mean, they're right now at six and seven, just not playing great football. Uh, Bill Belichick is having uh, difficulty with Cam Newton. Not that he's not going to start him. I mean, he will bench him and then tell you after the game that he's going to start the next week. So that's getting into this guy's head that, hey, you know, you, you're going to have to get better and make better decisions out there. And no quarterback is is above, you know, being benched. And, you know, Cam Newton is not, you know, and this is one of the reasons why they were very, very stingy on the money. And we all kind of balked at the fact that Cam Newton was going to sign. He signed with the uh, New England Patriots for a minimum salary. And, and we said, whoa, this is a former MVP. Uh, a uh, player who took a team to the Super Bowl and and all of that stuff. But now you know why Cam Newton is only getting, what, a million dollars or whatever and why he didn't get that, that big contract because, I mean, you know, the Patriots just don't, you know, don't believe in, in making those kind of bad decisions. But he's going to get to start uh, again this week. But at six and seven, I would have to say that because there's so many great teams in the a- a- AFC, I don't think they're going to make it. I mean, you know, the, unless the Dolphins just really fall backwards, which uh, I don't see that happening. Uh, I don't think the New England Patriots are going to make uh, the playoffs this year. And then we have the Jets, 0-13. You know, what 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 can we say about the Jets? It's just zeros across the board here. 0-7 at home, 0-6 on the road, 0-5 in the division, 0-10 in the conference, uh, 0-3 in non-conference games, and they lost the last five. I mean, surprise? No, you shouldn't be. <laughs> it's, the, it's the New York Jets, and uh, I have said many times on my show that I don't understand how a coach could keep his job through 13 weeks, but, I mean, it's clear that they're not going to fire Adam Gase now. But uh, it's just amazing. It is simply amazing. But anyway, let's go ahead and go to the NFC, uh, I'm sorry, the AFC South. 
This right here is interesting. So the Tennessee Titans started out, you know, kind of shaky a little bit this year. They had the COVID thing and got some games uh, postponed, this, that, and the other. Derrick Henry, who typically starts the season slow, is turning it up. This guy ran for 200 and what, 15 some yards last week. And this is scary. This is week 13. I'm sorry, this is week 15. But this late in the season, Derrick Henry is getting better. That has to spell a nightmare for any potential team that's going to face the Titans in the playoffs. Now, we saw what they did last year in the playoffs. They made a pretty good run. You know, they went to Baltimore and knocked them out. They went to Kansas City and played them well. And no one has an answer for for Derrick Henry. Um, the Pittsburgh Steelers played him very well early in the year when a game that they needed to win uh, in Tennessee. And I haven't seen too many people stop him. I mean, it takes a very, very defensive effort to stop Derrick Henry. And good luck. I mean, the way he's running over people. He damn near cost me a fantasy football win this week because I went up against him. And, uh, oh, my goodness, uh, Tennessee is on fire. And the Indianapolis Colts are 9-4 and four as well in that division. But for some reason, they're just not playing like a 9-14. and four team. I mean, maybe it's me, but they're just not playing like a 9-14, and four team. even though they've won two in a row, four of their last five. I just don't see Indy. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, the defense is sort of suspect. Phillip Rivers has been shaky here of late, but they're right there. They're, they're, they're right there. So Tennessee has not really, you know, this is not over yet. I mean, Indy could still win that division. Tennessee could be your wild card team, uh, which is interesting. So uh, the rest of the AFC South, nothing's going to happen with the Texans, 4-9. Uh, the Texans just are, are, are not a great football team this year. I just think the team mentally has checked out. We all know Romeo uh, Cornell is not going to be the coach next year. Romeo has been there, done that. He's not really interested. He is probably one of the guys that really accepts that interim title next to his name because he's just not interested. I'd be shocked if the Texans hired him going into to the season. If they did, it would be only because of, of continuity, only because he knows the organization. He's been there. And they just don't want to rock things, but I I, I don't know. And, and maybe how if you know how they finish their next three games or so, I mean they can make that determination. But I just think there's going to be a major shakeup there in the Texans organization after the season. Then you have your one in twelve Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, Doug Marone, if there's another guy, if he keeps his job, I would be shocked. You just have to be, you know. I'm amazed at how some coaches can keep their jobs with, with a crappy record. And the, the Jaguars have held on to Doug Marone for a long time because, I mean, the Jaguars was in the AFC Championship game just, what, three, four years ago. So it's just amazing how teams can drop off that fast. So anyway, that's the AFC South division uh, standings. Let's look at the AFC North. And this is where things get interesting, okay? this is. The Pittsburgh Steelers, Cleveland Browns, Baltimore Ravens, Cincinnati Bengals. So uh, you could potentially have three teams in the AFC North in the playoffs. Right now, the Pittsburgh Steelers have clinched a playoff spot. 11-2, uh, team started 11-0, have lost two games in a row. Uh, absolutely no run game with this team. Although, and we were pretty much fussing at the receivers for not catching passes, uh, good passes thrown by Big Ben over the last couple of weeks. But then you get Sunday night against the Buffalo Bills, and it's Big Ben who, uh, Big Ben had a bad game. He threw a pick six and another uh, interception, and that's just not, not good stuff. And then he sort of uh, really hit, uh, you can tell it impacted him personally because he says, you know, maybe I just don't have it. And this is something you don't want to hear from a guy that uh, started off 11-0 and and had been playing great football. I just think Big Bear was being kind of tough on himself. So I say the Pittsburgh Steelers get back on track. They have to. The run game is something 
that I think, you know, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers have one of the best coaching staffs out there. And I just think it's just coming down to they just don't have good running backs. Uh, I mean, you know, sometimes you can just you, you can design plays, you can do this, that and the other. But if you, you just don't have good running backs. And, and we've seen that with Snell. We've seen that with Samuel. We've seen that uh, with, I mean, McFarlane, who is still a, a, you know, a rookie, long way to go. He's not the biggest guy in the world. But uh, and and he might get better as time moves on, but they just don't have a running game, and that is the scariest damn thing going into the playoffs. They certainly have to get back on the win in the win column. <clears throat> They're going to play the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday night, team that they've already beaten and should beat again. But they just that running game. They have to find a way. Uh, maybe they have to get creative with the offensive line and how they block and what what they can do. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't have a running game, and I've just mentioned earlier about these teams that have, you know, like Buccaneers, they have a running game, even though they pass all the damn time. Uh, the Titans, damn sure, have a running game. Even the Kansas City Chiefs have a running game, you know, even though they pass a lot. But at least you have that option. Now, the earlier success that the Steelers enjoyed, especially with that 11-game win streak, involved a good passing game. So they knew that they didn't have a good running game, but they had a hell of a passing game and a defense that could keep you in the game. And now I think we're starting to see where if the if the if the receivers are dropping passes, which they have been, and you don't have a running game now, it's showing. I think that explains you know uh, both losses there. So somehow, and I know Mike Tomlin. I've I've been around Mike Tomlin. I've had a chance to interview you know, Mike Tomlin and, and, and ask questions. So, um, and, and Mike Tomlin would tell you that we, we don't have a running game. You know, we can ask this kick because we, 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 we're not playing Pittsburgh Steelers football. And when you look at some of the running backs that the Steelers have had over the years, uh, whether it's Le'Veon Bell, uh, the bus, I mean, man, you got to have a running game, you, you know, to even – set up the pass. So when you one dimensional like they have been uh over the last couple of weeks, uh it's easy to figure out. So they need to get back on track. They probably need to win out so that they can go into the playoffs a little uh, a, a little hot there. But uh so that's 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 my take on the Steelers. Anyway, so the Cleveland Browns, whoo you know, I don't know. I've heard a lot of people say different things about the game. Uh, the other night between the Browns and the Ravens, you know, I heard uh, best game of the year. I heard, man, both the defenses are awful. Uh, you name it. I mean, it's been mentioned, but I don't care. I, I thought it was a pretty good game. And if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, which I am, you certainly uh, enjoyed seeing the Baltimore Ravens lose, I mean, win uh, over the Browns because the Browns are, you know, chasing the Steelers for, for the division. That division is still somewhat up for grabs, even though uh, the Browns sitting at nine and four. Uh, they had won four of the last five games uh, until that loss there to, to the Ravens. Uh, the Browns are in the playoffs right now. The Browns are in, in the playoff uh, hunt right now. I mean, if the playoffs to start uh, was to start today, the Browns would definitely be in there. The Ravens are on the outside looking in, so they are a scary team. And this is why I said that three teams could make the playoffs from the AFC North because the Ravens, if they went out, I mean, they really have a good good shot at it. And depending on what happens with uh, some of the other teams, they, they uh, certainly the Raiders, uh, they dropped out. And I'm going to talk about the AFC West here in a minute. But the Ravens have a, a, an outside chance of getting in there uh, in, in the playoffs. And then you have the, the Cincinnati Bengals 2 and 10, and one, losing Joe Burrow for the season. They are just, you know, not a good team, but they're they're not – I don't expect no changes there. Uh, they lost five in a row, um, and I think Burrow's probably been out all of those five games, if I'm not mistaken, but nothing nothing doing there. So Pittsburgh still certainly have to beat them on Monday night. You don't want to lose to a 2-10 and 10 team, a 2-10-1 and one team. That would be a disaster. So – the AFC West, hey, you know, uh, for the longest, it looked like uh, we didn't know who was going to be 
the number one seed in the AFC West, I mean, in the AFC uh, conference, but since the Pittsburgh Steelers have lost two in a row, now the Kansas City Chiefs have the best record in the AFC at 12 and one. They have won eight games in a row, uh, which means what? They do for a loss, right? I think so too. But anyway, um, and then you have the Las Vegas Raiders at seven and six. The Ra- Raiders were looking pretty good, but now they are, you know, have an outside chance to to get into the to the playoffs. And this is why, you know, it's going to come down to pr- probably the Raiders or Baltimore. And I think that's why three teams could get to the playoffs from the AFC West because the Raiders have, have just not been playing great great football. Broncos five and eight don't have to worry about them. The Chargers four and nine uh, don't have to worry about them. But the Raiders have to worry about the Chargers because that's who they play tomorrow night on uh, Thursday night football. So a must win for the the Las Vegas Raiders. Almost said Oakland for the Las Vegas Raiders uh, tomorrow night. And that then this is a division that came between the Chargers and the Raiders. Always uh, must see TV because those guys. Uh, always play each other tough. So that's that's going to be interesting. So that is your AFC uh, division uh, standings. Now let's go ahead and look at the AFC playoff picture. And things will probably make a little bit more sense as far as uh, what I was saying previously. So the number one seed in the AFC right now is the Kansas City Chiefs. They are 12 and 1, first place in the AFC West. Like I say, they got a big game Sunday against the Saints, the 10 and 3 Saints. So, I mean, they lose that game. They are certainly uh, back tied with uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers as far as who's going to get that number one seed. So it's not over yet, folks. But right now, Kansas City is just really doing good. I mean, they have the run game. They have the passing game. You know, they have Williams at running back, Le'Veon Bell at running back. They just have options out of this world. And, um, you know, the defense is still the same defense, but Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes have put something together really special in Kansas City, and it's going to be interesting to see how things kind of play out. Uh, your number two seed right now in the AFC is the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have clinched a playoff spot. They have not won the AFC North Division yet. Uh, 11 and 2, first place. They play the 2 10 and 1 Bengals this week. So we can see how things might go. I mean, you know, perhaps they could get a, uh, a division win there in some kind of way. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, that's your number two seed. Your number three seed in the AFC is the Buffalo Bills, 10 and 3. They play the Broncos this week, a 5 and 8 Broncos team that, you know, the, the Broncos team beat the New England Patriots in New England. So uh, Broncos defense is to be respected now. They may not have the greatest offense, but uh, they are not that bad of a team. Don't let that 5 and 8 record fool you. The Broncos could, could, could easily beat the Buffalo Bills. I wouldn't be surprised, especially if the Buffalo Bills are just on this emotional high after knocking off the Steelers on Sunday night. So they are your number three seed, the number four seed, because right now, even though they're tied with the Indianapolis Colts, right now uh, they are in first place. And that, I mean, in that division, AFC South division, that is your Tennessee Titans. They play the Detroit Lions this week, another team that is sort of scary. And, you know, uh, uh, Lions can put up a lot of points, especially late in games. So, but like I said, Tennessee, Derrick Henry, oh my goodness. You know, he's putting up just, he puts up yardage that receivers sometimes get. I mean, just imagine running for 215 yards. In the NFL, who who even gives a running back the ball that much? But I mean, he's just a beast. Probably should take the name Beast Mode from from uh, Marshawn Lynch. I, I mean, I've never seen uh, a running back like this guy. It's been a long time since we've seen a running back like that. Now, those are your four division leaders there in the in the uh, AFC. Um, conference and and number one Kansas City, number two Pittsburgh, number three Buffalo. Uh, 
I don't think things are going to change in the AFC as far as one, two, three. I think you're going to, that's what, that's the way it's going to finish that four, who knows what Andy is going to do. And in, in, in Tennessee, it, it depends on how things um, pan out between those two teams. Your four, five, six, seven could all change. And let's look at the fifth seed right now. And that belongs to the Cleveland Browns, even though they lost. They are still in sole possession of that fifth spot in the AFC playoffs. So they play the Giants this week, the five and eight Giants who are going nowhere. And I think, man, after such a heartbreaking loss to the Baltimore Ravens, you know, the Cleveland Browns got to be pissed. I don't, you know, they could be demoralized from that game. I mean, you know, you put up that many points, it just looked like they were going to win. I think the Cleveland Browns have exceeded anyone's expectations so they really don't have nothing to be ashamed of but at the same time a loss like that could hurt coming off a short week and having to play the Giants the Giants can just play spoiler that's the thing about these teams that know they're not going anywhere they can just beat you just for the hell of it so we'll see how that happens but right now they are your fifth seed in in the playoffs the sixth seed belongs to the Indianapolis Colts. So that's why you got two teams from the AFC South. Uh, that could stay the same, even though um, the Colts, they, they, they play the Texans. So, I mean, the Texans, now that, that's a scary matchup because the Texans is in their division and they could play spoiler as well. So that's something you got to look out for. But uh they right now hold that sixth seed, which it could change. And then the seventh seed, the seventh seed in the AFC belongs to the Miami Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins were up there in that fifth spot at one time. Um, they're eight and five, and they play the Patriots. So this is a division game. And normally it's, it's the Dolphins that knock the Patriots uh, out of, you know, different playoff spots like they did last year. That's why Kansas City got got that uh, uh, the home field by there in the AFC. So the Patriots are in a position to sort of, you know, pay them back. Um, if you're a Ravens fan, you, you're probably wanting uh, the Patriots to beat the Dolphins this week because the Ravens are in the eighth spot there at – eight and five. They have the same record as the Dolphins. Uh, but uh, they, uh, this is why things are going to change. And, and like I said, from 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 six, seven, from the, uh, what, what did I say? Okay, the, the sixth spot and the seventh spot could change. Even even the fifth spot could change. Even the fourth spot could change. That's, that's exactly what I said. But we will see here. This is going to be an interesting game here. And I will be doing my show on Friday. Uh, making my NFL picks and, and just trying to see how that's going to happen. Um, so that's it. That is the AFC playoff picture there. Now the Ravens eight and five looking in Raiders seven and six. They in the night spot looking in. So that's why it's a must win for the Raiders on tomorrow night. The Raiders must win in order to uh, have a chance to to kind of stay in 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 this playoffs uh, hunt there. So, hey, um, don't forget, folks, that there's going to be Saturday football games. Okay, every year the NFL is always the third weekend in December that the NFL will feature a couple of Saturday games, and they both are going to be on the NFL Network. You got the Buffalo Bills at the Denver Broncos. And that's your first game. Then you got the Carolina Panthers at the Green Bay Packers on Saturday. All right. There will be football game on Saturday. And I know there's NBA preseason, college basketball going on. So a lot of stuff, a lot of sports happening, by the way. But uh, don't forget about those games Saturday. Uh, and then don't forget about the huge game tomorrow night between the Raiders and the Chargers. Like I said, a must win. Uh, for the Raiders in order to keep their playoff chances alive. So that's going to do it for this show, folks. Make sure you join me on Friday for my week 15 uh, picks here on Podbean. And as always, you can catch the podcast on iHeartRadio. So, hey, we'll see you Friday.